In this video, I'm going to do an example of conservation of mechanical energy. Start by identifying your object or your system of objects. The mechanical energy is the sum of all the kinetic and potential energies of your system. If no net work is done by non-conservative forces, then that mechanical energy is conserved. Let's look at this system. So I have an object sliding down a frictionless incline. The mass is 2 kilograms, it starts 3 meters above the ground, and it starts with a speed of 2.5 meters per second. What is the speed when it reaches the ground? Well first, what are the forces on the object? Well there's gravity, and gravity is a conservative force. There's another force, it's the normal force, between the wedge and the block. And that's certainly a non-conservative force. However, the normal force always points perpendicular to the incline. And the velocity is going to be tangential to the incline. So that means the normal force is always perpendicular to the velocity, and it doesn't do work on the object. So if I can conserve energy, I want to identify two points in time. Well, that's pretty easy enough. The first point is going to be when it starts, and the final point is when it reaches the ground. That's when I want to know the speed. Next, I need to establish a coordinate system. I decided to put the zero of my coordinate system here at the ground, and I had a positive x up. Now I need to find the functional form of the potential energy. That starts with the force due to gravity. It points along the x-axis, it has a magnitude of mg, and it points in the negative x-direction. Now I'm going to extract just the components for that, so I have the force is equal to minus mg. Now I want to find the negative antiderivative of that, which is positive mgx plus some additive constant. So now I need to decide where the zero of potential energy is. And I decided to put the zero of potential energy here at x is equal to zero. By looking what that means for this equation, if I put in zero, then this becomes zero, and I just have c. And if that equals zero, then c is equal to zero. I now have a functional form for my potential energy, which is mg times the coordinate x. Until you become very familiar with these types of problems, I strongly encourage you to go through this reasoning so you understand where the functional forms of the potential energies come from. So we have an initial and final point in time. We want to find our energies. At the initial point in time, that's when it's on the ramp. It has both a kinetic energy, because it has some initial velocity, some speed, as well as a potential energy. It's a height h off the ground. When it gets to the end of the ramp, its potential energy is zero because its x-coordinate is zero, but it still has some kinetic energy, which is one-half m times the final speed squared. And that's what I'm looking for. Conservation of mechanical energy says that the total energy initial is equal to the total energy final. And I know everything except the final velocity, so I can go ahead and solve. It looks like I can divide out the masses, and the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times h. Does this make sense? Interestingly enough, that kind of looks like a constant kinematic equation, doesn't it? In fact, it would be the speed you would get if it simply dropped vertically. And that does make sense, because in both cases, the gravitational force is doing the same amount of work over the same vertical distance. Well, I can go ahead and plug in numbers then, and my calculator tells me that that final speed is 8.07 meters per second. 